Welcome back friends. Today's video is going to be my best tips and tricks as well as what other people will share with me to getting your trailer ready for the spring season. So in the winter time when things are really slow you might not be hauling it as much but when spring gets here you want to make sure that you're able to hit the ground running with the trailer that has all the maintenance done to it. So if there's something some of the tips that I've left out that you can think of please share them down below. Okay, so how about we start off talking about the wheels and tires, that's very important. So first thing we wanna do is check the tire pressure. I highly recommend this item right here by Milwaukee. It's the M18 inflator. This thing works really fast. Let's check it out and see if we need to add air. So first we're gonna unscrew that, put this on the Schrader valve here. Turn it on. I'm not sure if you can see this in the glare. We have 32 PSI in the tire. We want to go up to 50, so we're going to hold that down. It jumps pretty fast. All right, so I'm going to get my stopwatch out. We're going to see how long it takes to go from 32 to 50. Ready, set, go. A minute and 11 seconds. That's really good. So if you need to do all four tires, go around to your truck, go around to your mower, it's really gonna go pretty quick with this. You're not gonna be here, out here all day dealing with just that one item. So the next thing I recommend is going around and seeing if there's any welds or repairs need to be made to the frame itself. So I have a little issue right here. It's still holding on with that weld right there, but it started to crack right there. So I'm gonna bring this in to someone who does professional welding on aluminum, have them take care of that. Then I recommend that you check all around the hitch. So I recommend you check all that right there underneath, check all the welds. So after you get your wheels and tires checked, one thing I recommend is getting yourself a spare. So last time I replaced one of my wheels and tires, I took the one, this one was fairly worn, but it does have a little bit of life in it. There are two times I've had a flat tire without a spare on a trailer, and that'll never happen to me again. It pretty much ruined my entire day and to just have one ready to go is something you'll be glad that you spent the money. Don't think that you can get by without a spare. All right, so when it comes to the wheel bearings, there's a couple things I like to point out. I could make a whole video on how to repack the grease on your wheel bearings or replace them, but this video is gonna just show you kind of a quick overview of what I do for my preventive maintenance. So I've owned a few different trailers over the years and the one popular brand is Dexter Axles and they have an easy lube hub. So this one right here, so this has a little rubber cap that you use probably just your fingers or you could use a screwdriver. And then right in the center is a grease zerk fitting. So get a grease gun, go ahead, lock that in. And just add some grease to it and you'll see it spring out a little bit. If you do overfill it, you might see some grease spray out on your wheels itself so just be aware of that and it's as easy as that if you don't have this type of setup and you're looking for some type of easy lube system there are some bearing buddies i use those before on a fifth wheel camper i had we used to haul it three hours one way up north every summer a couple different times and i put those on and it really worked out well another thing after taking your trailer for a spin is to feel the hubs and see if they're getting warm or not. So that's a sign if they're starting to get warm or hot, then you may want to consider bringing them into somebody to look at them and maybe replace them, or maybe find a video online how to do it yourself. And if you're interested in me making an in-depth video on your trailer wheel bearings, let me know down below in the comments and I will consider doing that. The next thing we're gonna talk about is your trailer light. So I recommend you hook your vehicle up Check all your lights, make sure all the blinkers work, all the stoplights work. If you have nobody to help you, take your phone out and just start recording. And you can just see real quick if your brake lights are working. And one of my projects I plan on doing in the upcoming video is to upgrade all my lighting to LED. So these are the old bulb style lights and they're just not as bright as LED. And I would just like to go ahead and replace those at some time. And the next lighting tip I have is user suggested. Let's go over here. I'll show you what it is. All right, the next thing I recommend is removing your bulbs and clean them off. As I mentioned, I'm going to be replacing these and then use a little bit of dielectric grease to put on there just to help seal out any moisture. 
Oops, that's more than I needed. So right there, just have a little bit of dielectric grease. Just put it right there on at the connection. That'll just help ensure the bulb life. There. And you can go around to all your bulbs. You can check all the wiring too. All right, so if you have a tandem axle trailer, more than likely you're gonna have brakes on it. And right here is a breakaway battery kit that I have. So this battery right here, it, it goes in there. That needs to be replaced from what I've read every two years. So you can get them a lot of different places, including Home Depot, where they're really not that expensive to do. Just a nice safety feature to have that up to date. And when it comes to your crank hitch right here, this can be replaced, which I've done before. If it's not too worn, but you feel it's starting to have some resistance to it, you can t remove this, take it apart, and then you can do some maintenance to it from the inside with some grease or some gear lube of some sort. And then I've had good luck with this gel lube right here for metal on metal parts. It's, it helps resist rust. So some of the areas right here where I just might have some moving parts starting to rust, I would do that. And then just checking your chains and everything, making sure everything looks good. Then when it comes to your ramp, you're gonna wanna make sure that that has some grease on it. Some have grease zerk fittings, this one does not. So what I would have to do is lower the ramp and slide it off to the side and then put grease on that just to give it the maximum life. So right now I'm in the process of getting the firewood out of here. Once I do, then I'm gonna to wanna to go through and check my tie down systems on there, make sure everything's where I wanna have it. If not, move them or replace them. All right, so now let's go over to the towing vehicle. All right, so another thing to mention, looking over your hitch, take a look at everything, make sure everything is in good order. Look to see if there's any stress cracks, anything like that. I did have a new truck one time that after I was using it for a couple of years, I noticed the ball starting to sag down a little bit. So I was underneath taking a look and you could just see where it was starting to have a couple stress cracks on it. So I ended up getting it replaced right away because once that starts happening, it's gonna go, so just make sure that's ready. And then if you haven't taken your hitch off, I recommend removing that, taking it out, seeing what it looks like. Sometimes they get so rusted in there that you may not be able to remove it very easy. So it's a good idea putting something on it, again, whoops, like this right here. So this says that it prevents rust up to one year and 12 times longer lubrication. So it's interesting, as I was making this video, I was thinking of some items that you could keep in your tow vehicle while you're hauling your trailer around. One thing that would have really helped me out that I never had before was some tire plug kits. That's something I made a video about a while ago, but that would definitely get me out of a jam. I remember especially one time on a Saturday afternoon where it's hard to find a place to get my tire fixed. And then carrying an inflator would be very helpful too. That's something you can keep in your vehicle or locked up in this toolbox right here that I have that's bolted to the trailer itself. And if you have some suggestions, I'd like to hear them, please comment down below. And that's one way that we can just all learn together from each other here in this community. So if you find this video to be interesting, helpful and informative, please give it a thumbs up and help support my channel. That's it friends, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.